So, Max. Kevin. Let's take another look at nodules because I think nodules are important to pathologists. You know, we, we think about nodules from an imaging perspective and we always think about tumors and, and the microscope is a great tool for looking at tumors. For things that aren't tumor, the microscope can be a friend, but can be a challenge. It can be challenging too. Right? Cause have, yeah. Because we're only looking at a little piece. Yeah. So here we have a little piece of lung. And what do you think of this one, Max? Well, from low power, actually, you know, if we think about our, our basic patterns of injury, I don't see a whole bunch going on. There's not a lot of fibrosis. I don't see a big inflammatory cell infiltrate. But I am getting a sense of some subtle, small nodules here. But otherwise, in the background, I really don't see that much in the way of abnormality from low power here. It looks bloody. It does look bloody. And, you know, we always say don't, don't pay attention to blood in the biopsy because it might be related to the surgical procedure. But I think when the whole biopsy looks red and bloody, I think you got to think about certain things. you got to think about vascular tumors. you got to think about vascular disease. Uh, some patients with pulmonary hypertension can have bloody biopsies for some reason. But I think here, the combination of the overall bloody appearance and those little nodules, some of which seem to be near a cyst, like in that upper right corner. Here. There's a nodule and there's a little hole next to it. So. Now, wait a minute. You're telling me that's a cyst? Uh, yeah, it's hard. Come lung, on. The lung that is... doesn't look like a cyst. The <laughs> lung is full of small, air-filled spaces <laughs> right, like this. Right. So you got to really you... look carefully for the cyst because I think there's another one on the right side here, right there. I you think gotta that's be a little cyst. Me. Yeah. Now, how come this doesn't look like the CT scan? Right. Because the CT scan on this patient shows multiple bilateral, irregularly distributed cysts. Right. From apex to base. From apex to base. So how come I'm not seeing the cyst here? How come I missed it? Well, I think the reason you're not seeing the cyst is that surgeons are loath to biopsy, do surgical biopsies on cystic disease, and they'll stay away from the big cysts. From the big ones. So they may have gone to a place where the lung looked a little less cystic, and that's why we're just seeing microscopic view of this. But also, remember the biopsy has, has collapsed under its own elastic power after it was resected. So we may not be seeing the real size of these cysts. If you blew this lung up into an active physiology or physiologic state, you might see that these cysts are actually they would be bigger. much larger. So two things there. One, you're telling me the surgeon stays away from the most pathologic areas? Right. Talk about making our lives difficult. Yeah, but you also want to keep the patient alive. So That's, well, they, they are fighting they that battle They have priorities. On both priorities, sides. priorities. Okay. And then the, the, the second thing here is that, right, surgical lung biopsies are taken with the lung collapsed. Right. And I think that's one of the major challenges. Like, we get a lot of, of cases, and it's, it says cystic lung disease, and the pathologist looks at it and says, I don't see any cysts here. Right. And it's true that these are subtle. You might say, oh, it looks like emphysema or something right. like that. But like Kevin says, if you blow this lung up, you put it in the physiologic state, get all those surface tensions in place, these are going to be nice, wide open cysts. And with little thickening or nodules next to them. So under the microscope, these are tiny structures, even here at low magnification. Yeah, I mean, this is two millimeters right, right. here. So exactly. Even so these collapsed. Are yeah, these are tiny. These are tiny. So... I think now we just have to run through the list of things that can make nodules and cysts. And we always include the smoking related disease, Langerhans cell histiocytosis, as a disease that makes nodules and cysts. Could this be Langerhans? I don't know. There's a lot of cells here. Yeah, and they kind of have look. that funny purplish look. They sure do. But these almost look like a, it almost looks like a big meningothelial nodule. Epithelioid cells or something epithelioid, like that. Epithelioid, yeah. A very unusual in appearance. Kind of. Kind of world, excuse me. <clears throat> I get a sense that they're 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 not just here in a haphazard way. They seem to be forming little eddies and little swirls. Yeah, kind of like meningothelial nodules. Kind of like meningothelial. And nodules. again, directly adjacent to the cystic structure right here. Right. Let's look at a couple more of the cysts here in this biopsy. There's a good, okay. There's a good one over here. And some of those cysts look like they're central lobular. There's an airway next to them uh, and an yeah, like artery next here. to them. Is that going to help us any here? 
Well, I mean, if it was airway centered, you might think a little bit like pulmonary Langerhans cell histiocytosis. Or other inhalation diseases like chronic hypersensitivity pneumonitis. Which can rarely give you cystic lung disease. Right, and have nodules certainly next to the What else? Cysts of microscopic honeycombing of advanced fibrosis, but we don't have advanced fibrosis here, so right. it's not that. Right. Berthog Dubé? It uh, could be, but it doesn't really give you much under the microscope. Yeah, that is just simple cysts. Like you take a perfectly normal lung and you. Drop Throw a couple cysts. cysts in there, yeah. and that's what Bert Hogue Dubé looks like. Right. Which one am I missing? So, other cystic diseases. Um, I mean, oh, LIP. LIP. Of well, cysts of LIP. Now, that's a whole other story that we're not going to talk about. But this we is will not one cysts day. of LIP. We will. Okay. But not in this case. Good. Because we could spend the next 10 minutes talking about cysts, cysts of LIP. So, I think what we need to do here is focus, like we usually do as pathologists, on the most interesting thing here. And the cyst might not be interesting to us pathologically, but those nodules and any cellular accumulations are going to be interesting. So, and the cyst wall, right? And the cyst wall. The cyst wall is really where the money is when you're talking about diagnostic features of cysts. You right. want to look in the cyst wall. So right. what do we have in this cyst wall here? Well, you know, this is a really hard case because I think this patient has lymphangiolomyomatosis. Lamb. Lamb. But I'm getting a weird sense from these nodules because they look epithelioid and they look more solid in their nodularity than the than lamb usually looks. Lamb is a is a spindle cell proliferation at the edge of a cyst. And I think we can see some places here that there where we it looks like this the these cells are lining up like this. to make sort of a fascicle uh, of spindle cells. And so, if you're concerned about lamb, you want to stain these, what would you stain them? I'll with? tell you what I would do. First of all, I'd make sure it's a woman. Of course. Because uh, although some people will say that it, it, can occur. it can occur in men, I think you really have to have a, a huge grain of salt if it's a man, uh, if your patient is a man. So I'm assuming this is a woman. Right. So the first stain that I jump to for lamb is an estrogen receptor stain. ER. Yep. These would all be ER positive in lamb, and indeed they are in this case. Right. HMB 45? HMB 45 can be negative or so subtle that you won't be able to call it positive. So to me... It can be pretty weak. It can be pretty weak. The ER is or uh, progesterone receptor will both be very strong. And they give you a signal when you look at low magnification at the stain of where the disease and how extensive it really is. Exactly. The other one is SMA, right? Because these are smooth muscle... Right. Uh, cells, and so they can be SMA positive. But you can get smooth muscle cell staining of the airways, and they can cause confusion. But I bet you that a lot of these more, that spindly right there, that yep. is lamb. This is definitely a lamb. Right. No let's, question about it. So you want to go back to one of those nodules? Let's go back to one of the nodules, because I think we have to explain why they are there. Exactly. They're more rounded in appearance. They have more epithelioid cells. Yeah, these nodules are not the typical appearance of lymphangiolyomyomatosis. No. So not I from wonder, low power and not from high power. Right. So so could this be a co combination of lamb with something else? Neoplasm. A neoplasm. Maybe a benign neoplasm. What if we did a TTF on this? Well, that would be good. If the TTF is positive, I think it helps us a lot. Adenocarcinoma of the lung? Solid type? <laughs> not very atypical, so we might not go down that path right away, but TTF uh, and epithelial cells of the lung uh, can be present in things that aren't a malignant tumor like an adenocarcinoma. All right, so, so what is this lesion that, uh, that is seen in some cases of, uh, of lymphangiolyomyomatosis and produces nodules of epithelioid cells with bland cytopathologic features? Micronodular pneumocyte hyperplasia. Micronodular pneumocyte hyperplasia. And the patients who have LAM who have TSC, tuberous sclerosis complex, complex, seem to have this association more often That's right. than it's not. It's more common in patients with TSC than it is in, in sporadic, uh, sporadic LAM. LAM. Right. So uh, I think we've given all the key points here. I think if you're in doubt, as we said, do the simple stains like an estrogen receptor or progesterone receptor, because they'll show you cells that just should not be in the lung in this kind of density. Uh, I like estrogen and progesterone receptors because really, you know, other than tumors that express estrogen and progesterone receptors, you really don't see accumulations of those receptors on cells in the lung. And it's a beautiful nuclear stain. 
It's exactly. either there or it's not. Exactly. You're not dealing with cytoplasmic blush staining like you right. might in H and B forty five, etc. Right. So uh, a great case of lamb with micronodular pneumocyte hyperplasia. That's right. Likely in tuberous sclerosis complex. Okay, so that finishes up this one. Don't forget to like and comment below. Thank you.